That looks good. What's that? It's wine unknown. Welcome to Wine Unknown. I'm your host. My name is Brian Fennell, also known as Bright Guy, and I'm a wine specialist. What does that even mean? Well, it means that I know a lot of information about wine, and I want to share that along with my passion with you guys. So no matter where you're at in your journey, no matter if it's the beginning, the middle, well, let's face it, there's no such thing as the end. This is the show for you. So previous episodes, we've defined what wine was and how to taste it. This episode, let's focus in on food and wine pairings. What should I have with my chicken Alfredo? What kind of wine should I drink with my steak? I don't want to come across as bougie, but I don't want to seem like I don't know anything at all. Well, that's why I'm here. Let's talk about it. So when did food and wine become such a thing that it's pretty much a part of our culinary experience as of today, modern day times? Well, I don't know. There's nothing out there that gives you the clear answers of like this day by this person was the first one to say, huh, let me have this glass of wine with this type of food. No, 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 no. But that leaves room for me to speculate. All right. So what I do think happened was it all comes from the monks, the monks, the monks. The monks were the ones that were making wine, cultivating, and they used wine as a rite of passage or like a ceremonial kind of thing, right? I can see one of them getting a little too lit someday. And it was just like, I need some bread. I need some bread. And right there, I think that was the beginning of food and wine pairing. That's it. I think it was just that simple. Because, like, when you start introducing, like, like sea salt and peppers to the bread, and now they're starting to, like, oh, snap, okay. Starting to add some flavor now. Like, no, I want, I, I want this red. I want our red wine to go with this because it has this pepper on our bread. Or I want our white wine because it has the salt. It just adds. You know, like, I can see it just going that way, you know. And that's, I think that's pretty cool. Yes, I am speculating. But I'm also thinking, like, this is negative 1000 BCE. You know, like, well, who knows? Who cares? You know, but it's just fun to just think of it that way. And now I just need up my own narrative on how food and wine fucking started, you know, or food and wine pairing started. And huh, who's to say that I'm wrong? Who's to say that I'm right? Nah, that's just that. But I'm glad that it did happen because of the impact that it has in modern day times throughout the culinary experience. Like you can't go to a restaurant or even a bar without there being wine, beer or whatever on the menu and it not being able to pair with any of the food that they're serving. So it's, it's it was a major improvement in uh, society civilization we don't even and they didn't even know what they were doing you know they didn't know the impact that they were going to have it was going to last this long the test of time like because they would have had that documented if they knew but just like all great creators and creations you're just in a moment you're just having fun just like in the hospitality industry, how you see so many wine lists out there that pairs that everything on there pairs with the 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 food menu in all of these bars and restaurants. How? How can that be? How can all these wines pair with everything on here? Well, there's this thing. The simple equation, right? All right, so just think there's six things that you're looking for or your taste buds are looking for, right? They're sweet, they're sour, bitter, spice, salty, and now we have umami. Umami is more like of a sensation, textural kind of thing. So, I mean, that that doesn't get put on the back burner, but it's more so... Uh, that's just a different experience when it comes to this whole food and wine pairing thing, right? So that's the equation. 
That's the equation. Now, with that in mind, with those five things in mind, as far as sweet, sour, bitter, spice, and salty, you're looking at likeness or similarities and contrast or differences. And that's your baseline. Like, because you tried the wines. I don't need to really try the food or I tried the food and I already know how this wine should just be just by where it's from, who made it and all this kind of stuff. Like everything becomes now in theory based off of this. I I would just keep calling it an equation because that's what it is. All right. So. Like you've heard, you've all heard the same. White wine with white sauces. Red wine with red sauces, white wine with fish, or red wine with meats. And the, you, you've heard it, you've heard something like that, something similar to like to that. And that's kind of what this is. But it's not the end all be all. And it's not always true. Just how, just like how we sat there and said, contrast, you know, that contrast pairing, it's, it's an outlier. It brings things to it. It just opens the mind to just like, whoa. Now, when I say similarities or like things with like things, we're thinking of like if you're throwing a ton of butter into something, uh, just 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 so happens to be like a fish dish. Matter of fact, yeah. All right, we'll start there with like a something like a fish dish, right? Or even yeah, fish dish. We'll do that. We'll do it there. Sorry, sorry for that, guys. We'll do that. All right, so now that butter is sitting there cooking, infusing itself within that fish, and then you have something like Chardonnay from, like, California that has a lot of oak. Um, Yeah, that has a lot of oak to it. But what comes with, comes with that oak from the Chardonnay is going to be, like, butter, butterscotch, cream, yogurt kind of pl- uh, flavors that's going to creep in, and then that's going to go really well with that dish you can even think of something like that chicken alfredo you know a chardonnay from california you know like or oak chardonnay i should just say it that way that's going to work that's going to work that's the home run you know what could you do outside of that a contrasting thing so if you have something that's so let's say um now that's where that would fall in umami and now i'm going to let you in on my thought processes where it's going to get like pretty wonky i would do something just like a based off of that i'm going something i'm doing something that is high acid with kind of saltiness to it and that's not going to be red that's still going to be white. i'm going to do something like an albarino you know where it has that salinity you know from racial uh raya bias Hopefully I said that race bias <laughs> um, in Spain. I'm going to do something like that because it does have that. Or you could even do something like a Sauvignon Blanc. That acidity cuts down on that creaminess. It cuts down on it. It's, it's so many different ways to do that. <laughs> and that's what I mean when I say all of these things. It's, it's all it's an equation. And you just go from there because like all of these wines do have different ingredients inside of them. And they just they're just never the same. Like red wine, for instance, it's so hard to find things to pair with red wine outside of the things that, you know, which would be like the red sauce or um meat, as people would say, meat, just put meat to it. You know, if it's, if it's red, give it like a steak or something. And that's because red wine has bitterness to it. There are things that can definitely cut through that. Like, of course, you got sour you got saltiness and you got sweetness. Those are the things that usually kind of like balances out that bitterness. Now we're thinking about what kind of food would you do? What kind of food would you pair with something that's bitter that you're drinking? Oh, man, and that's when you go to umami. <laughs> that's that one that you can always grab from somewhere you can't see. It's like out of your back pocket. Whoo! umami now that's when we're talking about umami just think of like steak right steak has oil oil isn't one of those things that's categorized as like salty sweet or anything like that that's just something sensational 
<laughs> it's just a sensation, you know, it's just it's just a thing, but it's it's it has a huge impact. And that's why no matter whatever the cut of steak is, you can get you can get a red wine because of that fat, that oil, all of these different textures and 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 experiences. So that's why that always works. Now, what's probably going to trip you up is a red wine like a Pinot Noir, maybe even a Balau Frankish. You know, like they're gamay. There's certain wines that you can do with fish. I know, I know. With 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 any kind of sauce too. It doesn't matter because at least the Pinot Noir has a it's high in acidity. So that's already playing off of the sauce, whether it's white or red sauce, it's already adding acidity to it. So if it's white sauce, it's already kind of cutting down on that creaminess. Depending on the other like ingredients that's within on on the, the fish dish or in the sauce, it, it can work out a whole lot more than you even think. Like I'm thinking like, I'm thinking like a salmon. I'm thinking like cod. I'm thinking all of these kind of things where you would not normally think to put a Pinot Noir, something like a Pinot Noir with. And that's where this whole scope of creativity comes from. Within the wine world or food and wine pairing, it's just like, a, oh, man, I could sit there and do something like that. But it's not for me. It's not it's not for me. I have to think about you guys, the average person who's not, who doesn't know about this or who's not as open, who knows what they know and they're, they just want what they want with how they usually drink or anything like that. They're not thinking about the experiences of learning something new or trying something new. It's more so just like, I just want a good experience. It's like, this is a good experience. It's just different. It's a contrast, and a lot of people don't like contrast until you try it, and you're like, oh, all right, all right, you put me on something new, you put me on, like, now I got to go put on my my next folks, you know, so it's, it, it kind of works like that, but that's only after you guys have built the relationship, and now there's trust involved and everything, so I think that's pretty cool. I thought that this was over, but it's not. No, because how could I forget? It's something that a lot of people don't do or they're not even aware of. But when it comes to food and wine pairing, you can do the dessert course. You can do sweets with wine. And that goes that falls within that still scope of either likeness or contrast. You know, so I can have a bitter wine, right? I can have a red wine and eat it with ice cream. I can have a sour wine or a tart wine and eat it with cheesecake. Or I can have a really, I what kind, like I can have chocolate. Chocolate is bitter. I can balance that with something like an unolt chardonnay. I get like it's so many different things that you can just do that you don't even think about that you can do with with like sweets. Like you can even do it with like potato chips. You like there's no limit or if there's a limit that you could do with like food and wine pairings, but essentially there's no limit. The limit is just yourself in I guess people's open-mindedness or willingness to try it because a lot of people will learn what what they like and what they don't like at the same time for their food and wine parents in the moment thank you for checking out this episode of wine unknown i'm your host brian Fennell, also known as bry guy and you just learned how i believe food and wine parents began You also learned the secret equation to have the perfect food and wine pairing. So tell your friends, 
like, subscribe, share, comment on all DSPs to whine and know. Cheers.